Hi, welcome back to the channel. Chuck, KK6USY for Ham Radio Adventures. So, I got asked by one of my uh, viewers to show my setup, and I figured, well, I've got an antenna build, and it's for a, say you've got like an IC705, you got it for Christmas, or you're getting it for Christmas, or you bought it soon, or you got an FT891, something like that, something without a tuner, so you need a resonant antenna. So today, what I'm gonna show you is my make on a fan dipole for two bands you can actually do three or four bands the more you do the harder it is to set up but for now 20 and 20 and 40 are probably your most likely bands you're going to use for parks on the air so that's what i'm going to show you so let me set this up and i'll show you i'm going to go through all the steps of how i set it up and and what i use to set it up with oh and by the way if you haven't subscribed yet Hit that button down below and subscribe. Hit that uh, bell, uh, get all, so you get all new videos that I post. And uh, don't forget to hit that like. All right, let's get going. Uh, I rebuilt my 20 meter dipole that I did a video on and I turned it into a fan dipole and the reason being is there's a lot of people buying these uh, the new IC705 um, the 891s radios that don't have tuners so what this does is gives you resonant bands for multiple resonant uh, for, gives you a resonant band on multiple frequencies. So this one I, I added 40 to the 20. Now the first time I set it up, and I'll, I'll try to put some uh, some video of how I set it up. The first time I did it, I, I did four points. I did two for 40 and two for 20. The nice thing about that is it, it actually was my guy points also for my my mast. I I put a stake in the ground, slipped the mast over the top, and went, you know, four directions. The only problem with that is that if you're on a parks on the air activation, or you have limited area, uh, it takes up a lot of space because you're going multiple directions, and now you're giving people four different places they can trip over your antenna. So I I I, I discarded the. The PVC part I made before because I wanted to separate these leads a little bit. So there wouldn't be as much interaction. There's going to be interaction. And when you adjust this, do your 40 meter element first. Get it right. Uh, I suggest setting out your, uh, your guy lines. That's this orange part here. I'll show you later. Set those to a, a point where you get a good V pattern and you want to be more than 90 degrees usually and I'll show you in the video the difference of not getting it wide enough and, and getting it too narrow and how that can change your uh, SWR also so to separate to make it two points what I did is I I came up with this okay this is a piece of uh, weed weed trimmer line and what I did is I bent the edges so it would fit in here at a straighter thing and it what it does is it basically holds your two lines apart so there's not as much interaction now I think this is about I think this is about two inches and I did that just to make it easier to um, to roll up into a, a little smaller a bundle but really i think if you went closer to four inches i think you'll get a little less interaction between the two it'll still be close up here but that won't really matter once you start stretching it out and separating it farther now what i did if you can see there's some marks here okay and that's that's what i used for a measurement 
I'm going to push this away so you can see better. And like, here's a piece of uh, weed whacker line. Okay. What I do is I open this up. And I was just trying to keep things uniform. And what I do is I, I put this into that line, basically, like this, kind of with the curve, the way the natural curve of it. And then I tip and, and I heat this up a little bit. You can kind of see it move. And then I bend this down like this. Careful, it's hot. Let it cool. And we take this off. And then it gives you the nice little angle there to slip into. I used heat shrink. And I would suggest getting the heat shrink that has the glue in it. Mine doesn't, and it still works. The glue would probably be better. And then what I do to make it grip better is I just take this, heat the end up. And what that'll do, if you let it sit there about that long, if you look, there's a little mushroom right there. Now, if you get your heat shrink over this, or if you only come to the edge of it and you heat shrink it, it won't pull out as easy. If you look here, you can see, let me get a little bit farther, you can see the bulge for that little mushroom area and how that would, it kind of keeps it from pulling out of that, uh, the heat shrink. And like I said, use the heat shrink that has the glue in it, it'll probably do even better. Okay. So basically on this, I just, this, this is a piece of ABS plastic that I bought off of Amazon. I'll try to, I'll link that into the video down below. I am an affiliate. And on qualifying purchases, I do get I, I do get a small amount. It's not much, and it doesn't cost you any more if you want to order it from there. But order it however you want. Uh, you can use anything. I mean, you can use um, a piece of uh, uh, cutting board. Uh, the dollar store sells cutting boards uh, by me for like a dollar. That you, well, it's a dollar store, but they're they're about this big, and they're about a quarter inch thick. A little heavy for what I would want. Because you got to remember that everything that's attached to this is going to attach to your your mast, and you don't want any more weight on your mast because usually they're a fairly lightweight one. The one I use actually used to be 35 feet. Now it's about 21, 23 feet, something like that, because I broke the top sections, putting too much weight on it. And if you can, you can see here I've, I've got this little uh, S beaner. Get these at Home Depot or on Amazon. I can try to link those for you on Amazon also. Uh, and and I, I brought my wires in just like I did on the uh, PVC one. And I still have the, uh, I, you know, I, to make this easy, I bought one with these with a, so I can put my coax straight up and not, not have to use a barrel connector. And just as a pre, as a something coming, this right here is going to be one of my next antenna projects. And that's going to be for a Moxon antenna. That should be due up in the next week or two. Okay, I was asked by a viewer to uh, show how I set up my uh, antennas for like uh, parks on the air. So what I have is a, this is a stake that I use for my pole. I made it, it's out of PVC and a steel stake. This was a 35 foot pole. It's now about 20. 22 25 foot pole. I broke it Today's antenna is going to be the fan dipole I'm going to have about 50 foot of 8x coax I've got my box uh, battery box it has Multiple fit fittings and stuff Just about anything you need to do And the inside I've got the 857 so what I'm going to do is set up the camera. I will set the uh, antenna up for you and try to get that all in view for you. And last but not least, I use these milk cartons and I put these little bungee cords so it has a little bit of spring to it. And I use that for the ends of the antenna.
Okay, that was a pretty quick setup. Uh, I don't know how long it was. I'll have to look on the video. I forgot to bring my phone. So, I purposely set up the uh, the angles to the antenna instead of a, like there's a 90. I set them like this. I want to show the difference in um, SWR, okay? So let me show you that if I can here. Yeah, if you look. See, the angle's not very good. As you can see on the screen here, uh, hopefully you can see that. I can't really see. Um, 3.4 on 20. I think we can get that better. Oops. And it's showing 3.4 also on uh, on um, 40 meters also. Yeah. So let me adjust the uh, the legs, and I'll come back. But now you can see on um, on um, 40, it's 1.2425. Very usable. Yeah, about 1.7. That's still usable. It's below two. I, what I found out is that I probably got the uh, the two wires a little too close on the hangers, but uh, this will work. And all other, other than my my uh, FT857 or the 891 that I borrowed, I, I've got tuners, so I don't really worry about that. It'll clean that up. That is the nice thing about having a tuner, even a tuner in your like your home base station. It's only a three to one. It'll tune that up, no problem. But that's usable. That's under two. You can see the difference it makes. You, you need to get those legs, you know, instead of being like this, they need to be spread out like that. I mean, optimal for a dipole would be flat, but that's pretty hard to do. So this is an inverted V setup. Uh, it's a very good antenna. Um, personally, I've got a KX2. It's got a tuner. I use a doublet antenna. I can uh, I can do 10 to 80 on that, and just all by pushing the the tuner button. But if you don't have a tuner, hey, this is the way you can do it. So uh, not my first choice. It's a little easier once you got it set up than taking a uh, say a link dipole and you you bring it down, bring your pole down, and change it, and then put it back up, and then you got to change bands again. You got to bring it down and put it back up. It's kind of a hassle, but it's not that hard. What I usually do is I use a little small pulley at the top and the pulley makes it easier so I don't have to move the pole itself. And uh, maybe I'll show that in, in the in, in somewhere in this video. Uh, so that's that's where we're at now and let's get back to it and I'll hook the radio up and uh, we'll just listen around the van a little bit. Hopefully you have another uh, stand in mint control for the first hour. So, there's something wrong with this radio right now. I think it needs a factory reset, but the SWR meter, or the, the incoming signal is not working on 20 for some reason. I haven't figured that out yet. But that's on net there. Alright, let me go. Let me get a clear and I'll just call out and see, let's see what the SWR looks like. Is this frequency in use? Is this frequency in use? Is this frequency in use? So it's showing about 1.7, which is what it showed on the uh, meter. It's USY. Morning, Chuck. Morning, Andy. Hey, how's my signal? I'm out portable with the, uh, the fan dipole. S8 peak in S9. Good deal. Uh, just doing a little video here and uh, heard you talking and uh, wanted to make contact and uh, everything looks pretty good so far. Okay, very good. That time you're a little over here. I'm showing you a little red here on the, uh, on the uh, 1200. So where are you located? Uh, 
out. I'm just out. So I just wanted to show you guys. There's Andy still, the guy I was talking to earlier. Antenna now is about 10 feet. I did set the radios out so they're stretched out. I just moved my milk bottles out. That's the nice thing about the milk bottles. I don't know what's even focusing. So, signals didn't change much. I talked to him and the times I was 20 over. But he's still a solid S9. And he's in San Diego. Okay, hopefully you got something out of the video today. Uh, it's pretty interesting how the signal, when I lowered the antenna down to about 10 feet, how it worked. And uh, the signals were pretty much the same strength both ways. Now the band changes, so who knows for sure. But uh, at least at that time it showed that it was about the same. So, is this an antenna that I'm going to use a lot? Probably not. Uh, like I said, with my... Uh, with my KX2, I've got a tuner, I've got a doublet. In fact, I'm going to make a new doublet and I'm going to uh, make it just a little bit longer so it's better on 80. It'll be kind of a compromise on 80, but right now it's it's set for 40 and it still will tune 80, but probably not great. But is this an antenna that somebody that doesn't have an antenna tuner in their radio? Yeah, that's a great antenna for that. Uh, you don't have to change anything once it's set up. It takes a little time to set the antenna up. If, if, when you make one of these, make sure you do the... Uh, <laughs> got the skateboarders back. I'm in a skateboard park too. Uh, make sure that you uh, do 40 first and then work on 20. And whatever, the, the higher the band, do that last. So, if you did get something out of this and you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell for all that gets you future videos. And also hit that like. Uh, it, it lets uh, YouTube know that you like the content here. All right, this is Chuck KK6USY for Ham Radio Adventures 73 off.